Hello there. Today I watched the infamous film Citizen Kane, and now I want to tell you about it. Citizen Kane was directed by Orson Welles and was adapted from an original screenplay by Orson and Herman J. Mankiewicz. It was written with contributions from John Houseman, Molly Kent, and Roger Q. Denny. The film is a black and white fictional historical drama about a man named Charles F. Kane, a newspaper magnate that used to be America's royalty. It starts off with a 15 minute montage infographic that explains who Mr. Kane was to the public, a bit about his personal life, and then ends with news of his death. The film, after that, follows a reporter named Mr. Thompson, who is sent on assignment to investigate the final words of Mr. Kane. This is your basic drama style art film. They start with the simple question about a dying man's final words, what did they mean, and spend the film looking for an answer. In the end, they tell you that the answer never mattered and that it was the journey that was important. The journey is about Mr. Thompson asking a series of questions to different people that knew Mr. Kane. Each of them gives their biased account of the man and the times they spent with him. And then, the film flashes back to the events in question as if we're seeing their stories unfold in front of our eyes. There are inconsistencies between the four people's stories and each person gives a conflicting account of Kane's personality. To one of them, he was a gallivanting philanthropist. To another, he was a womanizing cheat. And to the woman he married, he was an honest but abusive and controlling man. Through the four of them, we get a more complete picture of who Charles Kane was, but as they continue telling their tales, it becomes clear that none of them knew him completely. Each considers him a lonely man who saw himself above the rest of the world, but none of them knows what his final words meant. When the reporter gets to the final person in his investigation, he realizes that the phrase is essentially meaningless, and relays the film's core message to the audience through a conversation with his co-workers. The film really only has one character and a few tertiary characters that act as a vessel to see him through. We learn little about his friends and family other than what's implied by their stories and performances. While their tales do paint a coherent narrative about Mr. Kane, they aren't that interesting. They're the kind of tales a heartbroken ex might tell or a former friend who felt scorned. As for the man himself, Charles Foster Kane operates his newspaper like any ideal-filled spoiled brat. He writes whatever he wants and claims it to be the truth no matter if it is or not, and does whatever he wants with his money. He puts on an air of humility, but the reality is he can't seem to handle it when people disagree with him, or won't do things the way he wants them to. He's not particularly nice to anyone, but he is good at being charming in a crowd. We never learn about him from his own perspective, and as an audience member, the film leaves us with more questions about him than answers. He is an enigmatic mystery that shall forever elude us. His story isn't all that exciting, as it's basically the life of any modern celebrity, and by today's standards, everything he did and was criticized for would be considered extremely tame. The different accounts of his character are to be expected, and no one says anything about him that is all that extreme. There is a little bit of mystery with the question about his dying words, but the ending leaves a bitter taste in your mouth when you realize the question was just a tool to pique your interest. The story makes sense from start to finish, but it isn't interesting. Kane isn't a likable character. His charisma wears off quickly, and his story isn't exciting. Cast-wise, there is really only one performance to talk about, and that's Kane's. Orson Welles plays Charles F. Kane and does so as a man with swagger and confidence. He walks into every room like he owns it and talks to people as if he owns them too. A few times he's challenged, he immediately swings back with a fury, and he shows an inability to adapt to the needs of those around him. Welles does a good job of the different emotional states that Kane was shown in, and he even manages to show off a good bit of charm, but the character lacks enough depth to be memorable. His story isn't unique in this day and age, and his performance is quite muted when compared to similar films. The other actors in the film do a good job of portraying the different emotions that their characters went through, but we don't spend enough time with any of them to get to know them or invest in them. They are there to provide different snapshots of Mr. Kane. I would say that the general cast does a decent job of their roles and Orson Welles even puts on a solid performance, but I don't think that anything here rises to the level of standout. Visually, the journey is fairly easy to understand but lacks any real excitement and doesn't have any standout visuals. It's just basic shots of Kane in different environments, giving speeches, talking at groups of people, and the occasional conversation between two people. The entire thing is in black and white and has a slightly grainy quality to it. The most standout shots of the film are of Xanadu, the palace that Kane built in Florida. The building is quite an impressive location and they go out of their way to show its history in the opening sequence. It doesn't get a whole lot after the explanation, but it was a neat location for them to film in. The rest of the film, aside from focusing on different locations and sets, revolves around conversations between Kane and the people surrounding him. The shots are fairly basic and they aren't always well lit. 
There are times when the characters' faces are completely invisible to the camera and we miss parts of their performance because of it. They did a good job of aging the actors throughout the film with makeup, and the visual journey was easy to understand, but it doesn't offer a good experience, or any truly interesting visuals beyond some of the locations that they filmed in. Sound-wise, the film is filled to the brim with scored music that follows each and every emotion of the story. The classical-sounding instrumental tracks fill out each and every scene from start to finish, and they do a great job of amplifying the feelings they want you to have. The music stands out as impeccably well done, but in today's day and age of big budget films, this would be considered a standard scored track. The music is somewhat generic in the sense that many a film has tried to copy its sound since, but to modern film fans, the tracks will seem familiar. Overall, Citizen Kane is held up as some kind of masterpiece film that other films should aspire to, but it shouldn't be. It uses a boring trick to generate intrigue and presents characters that aren't interesting. Kane didn't do or say anything all that impressive by today's standards, and there are plenty of nuanced films out there about the lives of the ultra-wealthy. Wells' performance, while good, isn't some standout affair, and the rest of the cast is only there to facilitate the stories about him. The soundtrack is well done, but it is all background instrumentals and the visuals are outdated and don't have anything special to offer. As for a rating, I'd give this film a 5 out of 10 by today's standards. But remember, these are just my thoughts on the film. Let me know what you think in the comments section down below. Bye bye